In this tutorial on GarageBand for the iPhone or iPod Touch, I'm going to be demonstrating the Smart Bass and some of the features available within it. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's add a Smart Bass. This interface pops up, and what you have here is very similar to the Smart Guitar. However, you only have four strings, and you actually can't play chords by tapping on the top here. You can strum them out if you want. These strings will correspond to whatever chord they are under. And you may notice that the chords that we set in the previous tutorial in the smart guitar are also in this instrument. The chords will be in any smart instrument that you use after you set them so that they will all sound good together. If you want to have GarageBand automatically play for you, you can do that. If you want to use a fretboard, you can do so by tapping this button here. If you don't know the notes on the guitar or bass, or basically any of the smart instruments, they have an option to set the scale to where you can't play a wrong note in that scale. As you can see, the interface changes, and what you have here are notes that all correspond to whatever scale you just set it at. The lighter notes are going to be your root note. There's a number of different scales that you can choose from. There's some pentatonic scales, blues scales, some Japanese and Eastern Asian scales, major, minor. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off though. And let's go ahead and lay down a bass line on top of what we played before. Sounds pretty good. You actually have a number of different bases available to you, and you can access them by touching this button in the top left corner and tapping on where it says Liverpool. The upright bass actually doesn't have a fretboard. You kind of have to know where the notes are, or you can set one of the scales on it. You have a couple of different electronic bases, and you can tweak some of their parameters in this menu here. So I kind of like the upright bass. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and bring it back to the beginning. And that's going to conclude this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next tutorial where I'm going to be explaining the smart strings and some of the features available within them. Stay tuned.